Brothers and sisters, our teaching session coincides with um, uh, the Christmas day, the day that many uh, remember the birth of Jesus Christ, remember what God has done for the world. We are going to continue with the Bible teaching. So our Bible teaching continues the study of the book of Genesis. In part one, we have looked at the history of creation of the heavens and the earth and all that are in them. So we have seen that God made everything good in the earth. In the beginning, God made everything good and gave humankind the responsibility to tend and keep the earth. God made everything good, very good. God made everything very good in the beginning and gave humankind the responsibility to tend and keep the earth. In part two, we continued and saw that humankind failed and disobeyed God by the deceit and lies of the devil. Therefore, sin and death came into the world and the consequences thereof, which are suffering, pain, uh, troubles, wars, and the rest of the troubles that we are seeing in the world today. We also have seen that God destroyed that first world by flood and saved Noah and his family, eight persons, uh, with the living things that God preserved with them. You can confirm this in Romans chapter 5, verse 12. And then 14 through and 15, 14 and 15. And then 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 22. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 22. So it is not just the book of Genesis. This has also been uh, confirmed in uh, the New Testament. You can also reference 2 Peter chapter 2, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 5. In 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 5 says, did not spare the ancient world, as if God did not spare the ancient world, but saved Noah, one of the eight people, and preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood on the world of the ungodly, the world of the ungodly. So due to sin, God destroyed the first world. But you would have thought after God destroyed the first world and saved Noah and preserved those living things, righteousness will prevail in the world. No, because the agent of evil, the, the deceiver had continued in the world or continued in the world, that is the devil. So the world continued in sin. After Noah came out of the ark, God made the covenant of the rainbow. Some of you may not be familiar with this, so that's why I have to mention some of these things so we know. The covenant of the rainbow. God made the covenant of the rainbow with Noah. You will see that in Genesis chapter 9, uh, verses 12 uh, through 17. Genesis chapter 9, verses 12 through uh, 17. Uh, but I'll just read verse 13, or 12 and 13. Genesis chapter 9, 12 and 13. And God said, this is the sign of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I set my rainbow in the cloud, and it shall be for the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. It shall be when I bring a cloud over the earth that the rainbow shall be seen in the cloud. I've read up to 14. So in this part three, we want to um, link up the lessons in Genesis to the key point that God has provided us 
a way of salvation. God, having seen the, that the heart of man is desperately wicked, that man has imbibed wickedness, as you would see in Genesis chapter 8. Genesis chapter 8. Let's look at verse 21. God decided to make a way of salvation. So in the covenant of rainbow that God made with Noah, he said he will not destroy the earth anymore with my flood, but he's going to make a way of salvation unto mankind. So Genesis chapter 8, verse 21. Oh, and the Lord smelled a soothing aroma. Then the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake, although the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Nor will I again destroy every living thing as I have done. So what is the way out? Man is... This imagination is desperately wicked. The nature of sin man has acquired by eating the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And so God was looking for a man. Noah's generation continued to grow through these eight people that God saved. Noah and his three sons, you know, the children of Noah were uh, uh, Shem, Ham, Japhet. Yeah, Shem, Ham, and Japhet. And Shem continued, as you know, the generation, as I've told us, said, is about a fa family. God has created the family unit. And when you study Genesis, you can really pick that out. You see the genealogy, you see a family picked out, and then the next, the next, the next. Glory be to God. So the sons of Noah were Shem, Ham, Japheth. And from uh, Shem, God continued, and it came all the way down to uh, Terah and from Terah, we have Abram. The whole um, lineage from Noah to Shem, Shem to Asphat, uh, Aphasat, Aphasat to Eba, from Eba to Pelek, Pelek to Ru, Ru to Serok, Serok to Nahor, Nahor to Terah, Terah to Abram. We want to focus now on Terah and Abraham. And so let us look at Genesis chapter 31. Now that we have seen how it all ties in from after the first world was destroyed, Noah, but the wickedness of man continued. And from that, Noah, Shem, all the way to um, Nahor, Terah, Abram came out. So Genesis, go with me to Genesis chapter 11. Genesis chapter 11. And let's go to 31 and take it from there. Genesis chapter 11, verse 31. And Terah took his son, Abram, and his grandson, Lot, and his grandson, Lot, the son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law, Sarai, his son, Abraham's wife, and they went out with them from all of the Chaldeans to go to the land of Canaan. And they came to Haran and dwelt there, 32. So the days of Terah were 205 years, and Terah died in Haran. So that was Abraham's father. Terah died in Haran. Let's continue now with Abraham or Abram from verse uh, 12. I mean, chapter 12, rather, chapter 12. We'll read verses 1 through 4, and then we'll continue because this then sets the beginning 
of this covenant that we have come into. So open it, turn your Bible with me to Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1. Now the Lord had said to Abram, get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. To a land that I will show you. Verse 2, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. And Abraham was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. So God called Abraham out. Get out of your country from your family. And from your father's house to a land that I will show you. And God made a promise to Abraham. And Abraham obeyed God and took the journey. Here you would see what God promised Abraham. We can, we can put it in four key points, four key head, headings. Number one, that God bless. God said, I will bless you and make you a great nation. Number one, I will bless you. So this promise came with a blessing. I will bless you. God said, I will bless you and make you a great nation. Number two, God said, I will make your name great and make you and you shall be a blessing. I will make your name great and you shall be a blessing. So. I bless you and make you a great nation. So that generation, your, your, your generation, your lineage will enlarge and become a great nation. And then beyond that, you yourself, I'll make you a great name and make you a blessing. You'll be a blessing beyond yourself, beyond your lineage, you'll be a blessing. To the whole world, you'll be a blessing. And then, number three, he said, I will bless those who bless you and curse him who curses you. And so he said, I will give people to support you, to support my promise in your life. Many will bless you, but few will curse you. However, he who curses you, I will curse. So did you see that? I will bless those who bless you in multitudes. They will bless you. Those who bless you. There will be more than those who curse you. In fact, compared to he who curses you, many will bless you. So point three, God is talking about the support. The people he will send into his life to be a blessing to him. And he said, he who curses you, I will curse him. So God said, I will be the one who will protect you. I will be the one who will defend you against wicked, anyone who is wicked. And then point four, God said, in you. That is your seat. All the families of the earth shall be blessed. Beloved, this last point then connect the entire world to Abraham. At this point called Abraham. And let's look at how this then came to fulfillment. Glory be to God. So if we move there, you can look at, from this point, you can look at the life of Abraham in um, chapter 13, chapter 14, chapter 15, chapter 16. But let's go to chapter 17 and see what God, again, reaffirmed his promise to Abraham. Let's read from verse 1, chapter 17, from verse 1 to 7. When Abraham was 99 years old, 
the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am almighty God, walk before me and be blameless too. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will multiply you exceedingly. Then Abraham fell on his face and God talked with him saying, as for me, behold, my covenant is with you. Note that word, my covenant is with you. That covenant God already made by promise. He said he's already with you. And you shall be a father of many nations, as he said. Verse 5, he said, no longer shall your name be called Abraham, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. 6, he said, I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. And kings shall come from you, seven. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and your descendants after you. Glory be to God. Abraham continued and he had no child. As, you, as we heard there, God said, he said Abraham was 99 years old when God came and affirmed the covenant, the promise he made with him when he was 75 years old. And in chapter 18, chapter 18, if we continue from verse 1 to 10, then the Lord appeared to him by the terebinth trees of Mamre as he was sitting in the tent door in the heat of the day. So he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, three men were standing by him. And when he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself to the ground. May God open your eyes to recognize your divine visitation in the name of Jesus. Abraham saw three men but he knew that these were not ordinary men, that this was a divine visitation. I'm going to jump straight to verse 10. Verse 10, you can read the rest. Abraham entertained them. And in verse 10, and he said, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life. And behold, Sarah, your wife shall have a son. Sarah was listening in the tent door, which was behind him. And of course, you know how it went. Sarah laughed <laughs> and said, will I have pleasure now? And my husband, my Lord, my master, Sarah addressed Abraham, was already old. He was 99 years old, as we have heard. But God said, I will return according to the season of life, according to the time of life. Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. Because God has said to Abraham, from your seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Before this, remember, Sarah and Abraham have tried to do their own scheme. In Genesis chapter 16, you can read that. And Ishmael came forth. And Abraham had entreated God and said, oh, let Ishmael, you know, be the carrier of this covenant. And God said, no, that's your own arrangement. Because of you, Abraham, I will bless Ishmael. But my promise, my covenant is with you. And your wife, Sarah, will bring forth a son. And God affirmed it here in Genesis chapter 18. And so we move on to Genesis chapter 21. Genesis chapter 21. Let's see the confirmation of God's word. Verses 1 through 7. We we'll Just read quickly. And the Lord visited Sarah. Hallelujah. Your time of visitation will come, brothers and sisters. If only you can trust this God. Because let me already jump. By the seed, that seed, which is Jesus Christ, you have been engrafted into that covenant. And that covenant has never failed. 
It will not fail in your life. It will not fail in my life. Forever, oh God, your word is settled in heaven. God's word is settled in heaven. So God said to Abraham, according to the time of life, I will return to you and your wife, Sarah, shall bring forth a son. So we we'll read Genesis 21, verse 1. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son who was born to him, whom Sarah bore to him. Hallelujah. Isaac. For then Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God had commanded him. Now Abraham was 100 years old when his son Isaac was born to him. And you can also add that Sarah was 90 years old. Verse 6, and Sarah said, God has made me laugh. God will make you laugh. I say, God will make you laugh. Because you have been engrafted into this same covenant. God is your God. The God of Abraham is your God. The God of Abraham is my God. The God of Abraham is our God. And he never lies. He doesn't repent of his promise to his children. What he has said, he will do. What he has promised, he will bring to pass. In the name of Jesus. And I know God is promising somebody, I am the Lord that heals you. And he will heal you in the name of Jesus Christ. God is promising somebody, I will bless you and make you exceedingly great. Because that's the covenant he made with our father Abraham. Glory be to God. See why you should have peace if you are in Christ Jesus. Verse 6. And Sarah said, God has made me laugh, and all who hear will laugh with me. Verse 7, she, she also said, who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children, for I have born him a son in his old age. Who would have said, who would have believed, who would have thought that what God said to you what you believed and trusted God for will come to pass. But God is faithful and he will bring it to pass in Jesus' name. Amen. And so Isaac came forth. And let's look at the continuation of this covenant in chapter 22, chapter 22, verses 1 through 18. But we, we, because of time, we won't be able to read the whole verses. So you go read the whole verses. God tested Abraham in verse 20, then chapter 22. We'll just take the first few verses. Now it came, verse 1, now it came to pass after this thing that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. Then he said, take now your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So God tested Abraham, and Abraham obeyed God and demonstrated obedience that he loved God. And then God came to him. Let's read from verse 12. And he said, do not lay your hand on the Lord, or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. 13. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its horn. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. God does not want any man to sacrifice human blood to him. God said to Abraham, but I am the one who will give my son the perfect blood. Because no man's blood 
is good enough to save humankind. But by your obedience, Abraham, I will redeem. I will fulfill my promise to you that through you, through your seed, all families of the earth shall be blessed. And so Abraham offered a ram unto God. Now read verse 14 to 18 with me. Verse 14. And Abraham called the name of the, of the place. The Lord will provide, as it said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. 15. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven. 16. And said, by myself. I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son. So Isaac is an archetype of Jesus Christ. God restrained Abraham from having a child. Sarah, Abraham and Sarah. And then gave him a child of promise 25 years after he made the promise. And then tested Abraham's obedience and love and said, sacrifice that son to me. And Abraham obeyed. And God said, now you have earned it. The promise that I made to you, that I'm going to save the entire humanity through you, through your seed, you have earned it. I'm going to do it. Glory be to God. So verse 6, 17. Of oh, verse 16, again, I repeat that verse 16. He said, and said by myself, I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son. So as the Bible says, well, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Verse 17, God continued to say, blessing, I will bless you. I'm multiplying, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore. And your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. Let's read verse 18 together, please. In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. The same promise that he made in Genesis chapter 12, that original promise, verse 3, it says, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Glory be to God. So this blessing, this seed that God promised Abraham, the Bible makes us to understand in the book of Galatians. Let's just go there and then we'll come back. Book of Galatians. Let's go there, Galatians chapter 3. That this seed is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Galatians chapter 3. Let's look at it. Paul, the man, the one, the apostle, whom Jesus Christ gave revelation, wrote unto us. Galatians chapter 3. Verse 16, let's read that together. It says, now to Abraham and his seed, where the promise is made, he does not say unto seeds, as of many, but as of one, and to your seed, who is Christ. And this I say, that the law, which was 430 years later, cannot annul the covenant that was confirmed before by God in Christ, that he should make the promise of no effect. For if the inheritance is of the law, it is no longer a promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. Glory be to God. Well, let's read from verse 24. He said, therefore, the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith, 25. But after faith has come, we are no longer under a tutor. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Because the covenant God made to Abraham was that his seed, his descendant, 
He will be a God that he will be their God and they will be his children. Glory be to God. And through Jesus Christ, we have been brought into this everlasting covenant that God is our father and we are sons and daughters of God. We are children of God. Glory be to God. Verse 26 again, it says, for you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. 28, there is neither Jew nor Greek. Hallelujah. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. 29, and if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. Can you underline that for yourself? Verse 29, and if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. In case this doesn't strike the chord with you, let me emphasize it for you, brothers and sisters. Here, the Bible is saying that when you come to Jesus Christ, you give your life to Christ. You are connected back to the original covenant promise that God made to Abraham. So the new covenant in Christ Jesus brings you into the blessing that God made to Abraham, brings you into the promise that God made to Abraham. Hallelujah. And so when you read about Abraham, the great exploits that God made in the life of Abraham, in the life of Isaac, and in the life of Jacob, that great exploit is your portion today. And much more than that, all the promises of God in Christ Jesus are yours, are mine. To God be all the glory in Jesus' name. So, brothers and sisters, we have been connected. You can see now, if you are in Christ, you are Abraham's seed and the promise and heir according to the promise. Now, talking about the Abrahamic covenant that it is different from the law that was given to Moses. Let's look at that very quickly and then we'll bring this to, to a close. So Abraham had Isaac and passed the blessing, the covenant onto Isaac. As you can see in Genesis chapter 25, verse 11. Genesis 25, verse 11. Genesis 25, verse 11. Let's read it. And it came to pass after the death of Abraham that God blessed his son Isaac. And Isaac dwelt at Beer Lahai Roy. And Isaac, at the end of his own time, passed the covenant to his son, Jacob. As you will see in Genesis chapter 27, verses 26 through 29. Let's read it together. Genesis 27, 26 through 29. Then his father, Isaac, said to him, come near now and kiss me, my son. Isaac speaking to Jacob, verse 27. And he came near and kissed him, and he smelled the smell of his clothing, and blessed him and said, surely the smell of my son is like the smell of a few which the Lord has blessed. Remember that same covenant in those four headlines that God said to Abraham, is the same to you, the same to me, the same everyone who has come into Jesus Christ. He says, God said to Abraham, I will bless you and make you a great nation. He said, I will make your name great and you shall be a blessing. He says, I will bless those who bless you and curse him who curses you. He said, in you, all the families, of the earth shall be blessed. 
So Isaac, uh, Isaac continued to pour out the covenant blessing upon Jacob. I read verse 27 again. He said, and he came near and kissed him, and he smelled the smell of his clothing and blessed him and said, surely the smell of my son is like the smell of a few which the Lord has blessed. Therefore, may God give you of the dew of heaven, of the fatness of the earth, and plenty of grain and wine. Let peoples serve you, and nations bow down to you. Be master over your brethren, and let your mother's sons bow down to you. Be everyone who curses you, and blessed be those who bless you. Glory be to God. And so Jacob carried this blessing and continued. And you can read the exploits of Jacob from there on. Like when he was in Laban's house, how God greatly blessed him and enlarged him. And Jacob continued with the covenant. With the blessing. Now, let me ask you a question. Who did Jacob pass the covenant to? Who did Jacob pass the covenant to? Let's look at a few scriptures. So you then understand. Because God already told Abraham that his lineage will go into slavery until 430 years then they will come out and so what happened to the covenant glory be to God and that's why when they were coming out God had to raise Moses one to raise to, 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 to deliver them and to give them the law because as we read there, the law was a stopgap, a school teacher, until Shiloh comes. As God has spoken in Jacob, that there will be a time of gap. But not that God has forsaken his people, but at the end, the seed will come, and God will bring all nations of the earth unto himself through Jesus Christ. A few scriptures, and then we will wrap up. So Jacob, and you can also read Acts chapter 7. You know, everything we're talking about here is also repeated in the New Testament. You can read the whole of Acts chapter 7. Stephen's uh, message, because I won't call it defense. Stephen's message. Stephen was preaching starting from Abraham all the way. Glory be to God. Let's look first at uh, Genesis chapter 47. Who did Jacob pass the blessing to, pass the covenant to, if at all he passed it to anybody? So Genesis chapter 47, verse 29. Read with me. And as you have followed you could see Abraham at his death, blessing moved to Isaac. Isaac, at the time he wanted to depart, blessing moved to who? To Jacob. Now Jacob, at his own time of departure, what did he do? First of all, Jacob had moved into Egypt, into slavery. So let's read Genesis chapter 47 verse 29. When the time drew near that Israel was about to die. Can you see that? When the time drew near that Israel must die, he called his son Joseph and said to him, Now, if I have found favor in your sight, please put your hand under my tie and deal kindly and truly with me. Please. Do not bury me in Egypt. But let me lie with my fathers. You shall carry me out of Egypt and bury me in the Abera place. And he said, I will do as you have said. 
31. Then he said, swear to me. And he swore to him. So Israel bowed himself on the head of the bed. 48. Now it came to pass after these things that Joseph was told, indeed, your father is sick. And he, and he took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. I'm going to jump now so you know the story from chapter 48 now. So he brought Manasseh and Ephraim, and he prayed for them. And you can see the prayer that Jacob prayed for uh, Ephraim and Manasseh in verse 15. Maybe we just looked at it. It starts this way. It said, and he blessed Joseph and said, he blessed Joseph. So everything from Jacob was to who? Joseph. And he blessed Joseph and said, God, before whom my fathers, Abraham and Isaac walked, the God who has fed me all my life long to this day, the angel who has reckoned, or who has redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads. This is Ephraim and Manasseh now. In Joseph, he blessed them. Let my name be named upon them. And the name of my fathers, Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into multitude in the midst of the earth. And he continued. Let's jump to 20. You can read the rest. 20 says, so he blessed them that day, saying, by you, Israel will, will bless, saying, may God make you as Ephraim and as Manasseh. And thus, he set Ephraim before Manasseh. He set Ephraim before Manasseh. Jacob, I mean, uh, Joseph's children. But <laughs> glory be to God. Who did he himself bless? Joseph. 21 and 22. Then Israel sent to Joseph, Behold, I am dying here now. But God will be with you and bring you back to the land of your fathers. Moreover, I have given to you one portion above your brothers, which I took from the hand of the Amorite with my sword and my bow. And then 49, he continued to bless or to, in fact, he said, just hear what the Bible says. And Jacob called his sons and said, gather together that I may tell you what shall befall you in the last days. What shall befall you? That's it. He's given everything to Joseph. And he said to the others, come, let me tell you what will happen to you. Not the covenant, not the blessing, that Abraham gave to Isaac and I, God gave to Abraham. Abraham hand over, handed over to Isaac and Isaac handed over to Jacob. Jacob ended it in Joseph because he knew that what will happen as God had spoken to Abraham. And so hear what Jacob said. So he began to speak to them. Of course, you know, Reuben was... Uh, uh, had a problem with the father. And you know, the second Simeon had a problem with the father. And you know, even the third person had a problem also. And then God, uh, just uh, Jacob moved to the fourth. So let's go to verse eight. You can read all the others. I've talked about um, um, Reuben, Simeon. So he dealt with uh, Reuben, Simeon, and Levi, and then he moved to uh, Judah. So you see that from uh, that verse 1 to verse 7, all cursed. And then he came to Judah. So read verse 8 with me. He said, Judah, you are he whom your brothers will praise. And Judah means praise as well. Your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's children shall bow down before you. Nine, he said, Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, you have gone up. 
He bows down, he lies down as a lion. As a lion, who shall rouse him? 10, it says, the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh comes. And to him shall be the obedience of the people. Did you see that? Until Shiloh comes. The kingship shall be in Judah till Shiloh comes. This Shiloh is referring to Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. Beloved brothers and sisters, so as we have seen, the seed of Abraham that God promised, through whom all the families of the earth shall be blessed. The Messiah of God that God promised, the Christ has come, Jesus Christ. The archetype of God's tests to Abraham in Isaac, where Abraham passed the tests and proved his love and obedience to God. God has in turn given us his son, Jesus Christ. And that's so you can now read John chapter 3, verses 16, or from 15, all the way to 17, with full confidence and understanding, according to God's promise. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 17, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So as many as are in Christ Jesus are the seed of Abraham and heir according to the promise. The Almighty God bless you, brothers and sisters. This is where we will um, pause. There are specific things we will come back and address, specific studies like what we've talked about, understanding God's plan for the family, family management. We will come back to it as a separate study. And there are many other things. So I'll just uh, let us ask questions or contribute before we pray. Uh, I, I believe this now sets the clarity for you to understand how we have been connected to that God's original plan for mankind and that we may live that life and fulfill it today through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that's why Jesus said boldly, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. There is no other way, brothers and sisters, to this eternal life, to this blessing of God, the blessing that God has promised to bless the entire humankind, except through Jesus Christ. It is good to connect this together and bring it to this point. And now you can see that today, where many are marking the remembrance of the birth of Jesus Christ. I think it's commonly agreed that there is no single date one can pinpoint and say this is the day Jesus was born. But some have uh, found it worthy to remember the birth of Jesus Christ. And I think it makes a lot of sense. However, whether you are of those who mark or who remembers the birth of Jesus Christ or of those who do not remember the birth of Jesus Christ, today is a symbolic day. As we have brought this study together to show that Jesus Christ is that seed of Abraham through whom God has blessed the whole nations of the earth. And it's, it's on this same day that 
Some all over the world are remembering the birth of Jesus Christ. That the Son of God was born into this world to bring joy to humanity, great joy to humanity. Would you make this joy your own portion? It is left for you. Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. I say this is eternal life, that they may believe in you, the almighty God, believe in you, the Father God Almighty, and in your son, Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Beloved, let us pray. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Would you receive the gift of God? And if you have received the gift of God, as we said earlier when we were sharing on the remembrance of the birth of Jesus Christ, that this birth brought, has brought great joy into the world. Will you meditate on what this son of God means to you? What the Son of God mean to you, his birth mean to you, his coming into this world. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, now interceding for you, for me, for the world, as many as have come to him, to them. He gave the power to become the sons of God, the daughters of God, the children of God. For there is... No other name among men, no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved except the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus saves. Let us pray. Pray with me, Heavenly Father. Thank you for the original covenant that you made with my father Abraham. And through your son, Jesus Christ, you have brought me into that original covenant. I give my life to you, Jesus. I surrender all to you, Jesus. You are my Lord. I confess with my mouth, you are my Lord. You are my savior. You are my king. You are my redeemer. And so heavenly father, today I ask let that original blessing be my portion. Let all your promise, according to your word, according to the everlasting covenant in Christ Jesus, be my portion. Let the blessing of Abraham manifest in me, in my life, in my family. And Lord God Almighty, as you pronounced to Abraham, so let it be upon my life upon my family, upon my generation, as long as Jesus tarries and let my life honor you, O God, and glorify you. Let my life honor you, Jesus, and glorify you. Help me, help my brothers, help my sisters, help every one of us to do your will. And through your son, Jesus Christ, the seed that you have promised, Almighty God, we pray today that you bring all nations of the earth unto yourself, as many as you have, you have ordained, your elect, from every people, every tribe, every tongue, every nation, draw them unto yourself and save us all. Thank you, our Lord and our King. For we have prayed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The joy of the Almighty God through His Son Jesus Christ invade and envelop your life and your family. Today, all through this season, and for the rest of your life. In the name of Jesus. And may it be so unto me also in Jesus' name. Amen.